Well, hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this episode, we are talking about MVD Rewind. It's been a while since our last MVD Rewind collection spotlight, and uh, all of these titles have just come in for me recently, and we haven't talked about them here, so this is a good opportunity to do that. I guess the the ones... You know what? Here's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to share... They're, they're numbered, first of all. They're numbered across the tops of the spines, but we're going to talk about Drive... We're going to talk about Action USA, Mortuary, which I have to say, according to social media, uh, I believe Eric D. Wilkinson, the, the maestro of these collections, is manning the social media. The slipcover for this is now sold out. They only uh, guarantee a certain amount of those, and this the slipcover is now gone, so if you order it from this point forward, your odds of a slipcover or the O-ring, the O-sleeve, that's it's pretty low. One Dark Night. Every time I think of this movie, I think of that Phil Collins song, One More Night. It's just like, One Dark Night. One Dark Night. But that's not in the movie. Uh, the Go Go Boys and The Dark. So here's, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've watched about half of these, and about half of these I have not yet had a chance to watch. But I would rather come before you and talk about them. Talk about what I have seen, especially because uh, as I'm recording this video, both The Dark and One Dark Night are still in pre-order phase. They're not officially available yet. So I have, you know, a first look at these. I have an advanced look and I wanted to talk to you guys about them. Also important to mention that both of these movies were previously issued um, through Code Red. I believe it was Code Red, wasn't it? They, they, I think one was even like a Ronin Flix exclusive, uh, limited to a certain amount of, of units, and they're gone. They're gone. So, enter MVD. I noticed that the Dark actually has Code Red on the back. So this is in partnership and collaboration with Code Red. Um, but I wanted to talk about these movies because they're they're back in print, and that's a fantastic thing. You know, we live in a, a marketplace where it's not always certain if something that goes out of print will be back in print. So, good news for for these two movies. Um, I'll t you know, I'll talk a briefly about because I've watched uh, so One Dark Night. Um, let's start there. Great. It's it's a weird movie, but it's fun. It's got this really cool atmosphere, and it's. It's got Adam West in it. I love these like later Adam like seventies and eighties Adam West roles. Um, Batman. In case you don't, in case you're you know very young, you don't remember Adam West Batman. But uh, it's it's a fun movie. I have the previous version of this, so I was not discovering it via this 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 uh, this new pressing. But I wanted to tell you guys that it does care for, I was able to compare the older release with the new release, and I believe every single extra has been carried over. It is loaded, before I even go there, uh, one of the things that Eric does, and we've, we've you know, Eric, well, Eric D. Wilkinson is a friend of Serial at Midnight. He's got, a, we did a Die Hard commentary last Christmas. There's a, uh, uh, a commentary for Die Hard on the main YouTube channel, you know, youtube.com slash Serial at Midnight. It's a commentary for Die Hard. You can find it under our commentaries playlist right there on our main page. Um, the man loves Die Hard so much, he took out a full-page ad in one of the trade papers to protest what he thought was happening with some of the sequels, or what was said to be happening with some of the Die Hard, one of the Die Hard sequels. Uh, so Eric D. Wilkinson, is, uh, he's a fan through and through. He loves this stuff, and that is reflected in the, the packaging for these things. Here we have like a clamshell i mean it's cardboard this is just a piece of cardboard right here's our standard blu-ray case with the alternate artwork mind you uh but it's got you know it looks like the old plastic rental stores right and it's got uh eric's video you know eric d wilkinson's video and uh it, you know how they would take the cardboard and they would cut it and then they would stick it into the sleeve like my library still does this actually they probably don't have vhs tapes anymore but my library did do that anyway all the extras are carried over and uh, i'm going to hold these up for you so you can get a good gander yourself but we're talking about uh the the newer remaster i think it was a 2017 possibly remaster for this movie the new scan Audio commentary number one, audio commentary number two, and tons of interviews. 
um, the most important thing that many of you guys are going to ask about who know the alternate director's cut slash the work print version of the film uh, standard definition is included that alternate cut it's right here behind the scenes footage photo galleries and they all come with mini posters every MVD rewind release comes with a mini poster which is a nice touch so that's one dark night if you want it now's the time uh, and the dark is a fun fun atmospheric this is directed by John Bud Cardos who was uh, a lot of people have discovered Bud Cardos within the last year, year and a half, via the Al Adamson set that came out from, uh, from, uh, was it from Severin, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, John Bud Cardos is involved with a lot of those movies. He was a friend of Al Adamson, and he's in a lot of supplemental features for those talking about. He's continued the legacy. Had, he's passed away now. But he went on to direct The Dark and other movies as well. But this is the one. I mean, it's it's good. It's fun. It's low budget enough that it still feels like what I think we want from this kind of a movie. But it's got enough money behind it that it doesn't feel. It feels like a step up from those Al Adamson movies for sure. It feels a lot more competent. It's got like decent special effects. This is the movie with the score that it's like vote. It's like dark, dark. I actually think that's really interesting. And they talked to the composer uh, in the interviews here. They talked to, what's his name? Roger Kellaway, who was like a, he was a jazz musician prior to being a composer. So 25 minute interview with him, a uh, 13 minute interview with Bud Cardos, uh, isolated score for those that do like the music. I think the music is actually really cool. Um, this movie has, let me read the cast. He's got William Devane, Kathy Lee Crosby, Richard Jekyll, who I came to know from Baywatch of all things Keenan Wynn uh and uh and an alien <laughs> and it's it's a really fun movie with a lot of cool like time capsule stuff like they shot I gather they shot it in 77 it was released in 79 but there's a, a Star Wars billboard on the road like you know like a you see going down the highway there's a big Star Wars billboard uh, which is fun. First one, because there was only one at the time, you know. Uh, so anyway, this is uh, this is now available as well, or it's it's about to be available. It's available for pre-order, and it oh, it has a cool interior artwork too. It's got the poster, but I wanted to show you guys the. You know what? I'm just gonna just pull this out here, hold that up for you guys. I think this is nice. I like that this is included. I was very impressed with this movie when I saw it because it's got um, great cinematography. It just, it feels a cut above what you would expect from this kind, from an alien movie from 1979. It was not conceived as an alien movie. It's interesting facts about this movie. So I'm going to, I could talk about that for a while. I'm going to move on, but uh, I recommend it. I recommend anything in the MVD Rewind collection. I think Eric is a good curator. He knows what's going to resonate with people. Uh, let's talk about the Go-Go Boys. This is the... So, a lot of people have seen Electric Boogaloo, Mark Hartley's documentary about Canon Films. Um, he's an Australian filmmaker. Let's see, 2014. Uh, he makes a movie uh, chronicling the rise and fall of Canon Films. When the Canon leaders, when uh, Golan and Globus... Let's see. Menachem Golan. Menachem Golan and... Uh, Yoram Globus. It took me a second to pull those. Uh, when they heard about this, they were like, well, we're going to beat, in traditional canon style, they're like, we're going to beat him to the punch and make our own documentary. So they hire uh, a filmmaker. You know, it's it's very Israeli, right? Because these are a couple of, um, these guys came from the Israeli film scene and I gather they hired an Israeli director to make this. Hila Medelia is I think how you pronounce her name. But, it's their version of the story and it doesn't focus on the movies much at all. It focuses on how, on how awesome they were and what great risks they took. I mean, it really, it, it's not propaganda. It's not necessarily a puff piece, but there's a scene that the director has left in the movie where he, she says, what were some of the, can you talk a little bit about the failures of Canon, which there are many, you know, there, <laughs> it's a lot. Um, 
which is part of this part of what makes it interesting. There's no such thing as just success, success. You you learn from failure. She asks Golan this, and he doesn't want to talk about it, and he snaps at her. He's like, "Why? Why? Why do you ask me about this? Why do you want to know about my failures? I had no failures. There were no failures. I never made a failure." And she's like, "Of course you did. There's no way to talk about you know what I just said. Like, the, there's no way to, we need to hear about the failures." And he won't do it. And he goes, "You can say whatever you want to say in the film, but I'm not going to talk about it." So I gather that he was, she had the freedom to make the documentary she wanted to make, but she did not have the cooperation of the two main talking heads in the movie uh, discussing the fall of canon films. So it is a fairly one-sided look. But, but you look, you put the two of these together. You put Electric Boogaloo, the Go-Go Boys uh, together, you watch them both. You've got a pretty good balance. You've got, well, here's the best case scenario, you know, the glowing weren't we great? And then here's the more realistic, perhaps more exploitative look at how it fell apart. You put those together, you've got a pretty good picture of what happened. And I'm going to add uh, that you also want to read the Canon Film Guide Volume 1 from Austin Tronick, who is a Patreon supporter of Serial at Midnight, which is very cool. To find out how you can be a Patreon supporter and unlock over 100 exclusive videos, visits patreon.com slash serial at midnight like Austin Tronic. We interviewed Austin too about uh, the Canon Film Guide and I can't wait to uh, read the Canon Film Guide Volume 2. It's going to be a three volume book and I mean it's exhaustive. It's truly scholarly. There's so much information there. So this does, it just scratches the surface but I'm so grateful that we have this because up until now I don't even think we had an option to see this um, in the form that I think like it was missing subtitles because, you know, most of the people are speaking, they're not speaking English. And so um, we now have subtitles so we can see what everybody's saying. It's very interesting. So uh, those are the three I've watched. The three that I haven't watched was Mortuary. Bill Paxton's in this, which I'm, I'm really curious to see it. I, I want to, you know, just didn't want to wait. I wanted you guys to know about these pre-orders before, um, before time was up. So high definition presentation of Mortuary. Uh, interview with composer John Kakavas, I believe is how you pronounce it, and a collectible mini poster. So you're going to get this artwork clean on a mini poster, no stickers. Um, and it's got a movie melt, a heat sensor sensitivity warning. Man, Eric is just so, so detail oriented with this stuff. Be kind, rewind. Show you the, uh, there's the poster, there's the disc. Always good to get Bill Paxton on Blu-ray. Rest in peace, Bill Paxton. Action USA. Uh, this is another one that the, the interior art is completely different from the slipcover, which I, I like. I like having two different pieces of artwork. Now flip these over. This is loaded with special features. I'll hold this up so hopefully you can read that. I, I, it's small print, but... Uh, I'll go through it really quick. So HD presentation, uh, audio commentary with director... The director, the star, the cinematographer, uh, moderated by filmmaker Steve Latshaw. Interview with the director in HD. Action USA behind the scenes. Uh, a stunts featurette that's in standard definition. Theatrical trailer, reversible artwork, which is these, these two pieces of artwork, and uh, the theatrical, oh, the mini, mini poster. So I haven't seen this one either. I would like to know what you guys think about it from those who have. I'm excited about watching it. And then the last one is uh, Drive. Now some of these, this has been out for a while. It's been out for a few months, but I have just caught up with it. So um, Mark DeCoscos of Brotherhood of the Wolf fame, or if you're wanting to be proper with the title, Le Pac de Loup. Le Pac de Loup. Mark DeCoscos, Kadeem Hardison, Brittany Murphy. Rest in peace, Brittany Murphy. This is turning into a, a eulogy for a lot of these people. Uh, here's our two pieces of artwork. We have different... Uh, we don't have different. We have, we have special features. We have uh, the HD presentation. Uh, ooh, new 4K scan. I just kicked the camera. New 4K scan. Uh, audio commentary with the director, fight choreographer, the stars. Uh, Drive: The Force Behind the Storm, a 47-minute documentary. Now, those of you who've been with MVD Rewind for a long time, know, and this is why some of these releases end up on our best of the year list. These documentaries are often as good or better than the movies themselves because they can really, I'm thinking specifically of the Double Dragon, MVD Rewind's uh, audio, the, the documentary about that because they get into, 
you have the direct, you have the filmmakers talking about how, well, here's what we tried to make. The, it's actually the writers. So like, here's what we tried to make. And then the director, like the director lost the confidence of everybody. It's the, they're just telling everything. And I, it's like, you know, sometimes the studios get involved in these and they don't want these stories to be told. I'm amazed that some of this stuff came out because they're like, yeah, we, uh, we turn in this script and then we find out that the director had lost the confidence of his crew. He, they didn't, they knew he didn't know what he was doing. So it was just all downhill. Could have been great. And then you hear how it was intended and you're like, wow, that's, that's wow. So these documentaries are often, Oh, what's another one? Uh, there's one where we find out about, uh, the star of the movie was someone who was not cast and you find well, yeah, this person was cast and they were so demanding, um, that, uh, that they got fired and we had to bring in somebody else. I mean, the stories that pop up on these things, it's amazing. Six deleted scenes, interview gallery with the cast director and crew, including Martin Dacascos and Kadeem Harrison, uh, the director as well. Weed and stunt, co- Wyatt Weed, I said continue to, the weed and stunt coordinator. Could you imagine if there was a weed coordinator on a movie? That's amazing. Um, Drive, the theatrical cut with optional subtitles and uh, the original theatrical trailer, versatile artwork, and mini poster. So you have, uh, you have, what's the, what's the theatrical cut situation? So it's an hour and 39 minutes. Wow. So the, the theatrical cut, so we have an hour and 39 minute version. That's a two hour and 19 minute movie. Versus the 112 minutes cut that is presented here. So can't wait to find out what's going on with that. Those of you who've watched this and de- delved into those special features, what's up with that? Let's, let's continue to talk about that. Uh, guys, MVD Rewind, continuing to do incredible work, uh, really getting into the stories themselves. Got a lot of respect for what, uh, for what these, for what this label does, for what MVD Rewind does. They bring us movies that, uh, that's, you know, may not have been the most lauded or commercially successful, but that have interesting stories and interesting things to say and uh, get those stories in front of people. So these are all available either right now or available to pre-order right now. So let's continue the conversation in the comments below. Guys, thanks so much. Take care. Until next time, here's where to go and what to do.